Our bed closest to our barn here is really taking shape and has a lot of nice color and you know we're trying to convert it over to a perennial bed. But for some reason people think that perennials, once you put them in, that's it. You don't have to do any more work with those perennials. And take our irises for example. They are a perennial. They're very hardy. Uh, they do a great job in Oklahoma. But these we estimate are probably between four and five years old, this particular clump. They're getting very crowded. We see a little bit of insect and disease problem, but nothing really to worry about. So it is time for us to go in and divide the irises, and that's usually done in July, August, early September. And really, July, August would be best because they need about four to six weeks to reestablish before we get a freeze. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's show you how to go in and renovate an iris bed. The first thing that we are gonna do is cut the tops to begin with because they're so crowded it will be hard to get in there and dig them up without breaking and doing a lot of damage. So we're gonna go in and cut the tops. The first thing we usually do is cut them about six, eight inches and then we'll probably trim them up a little bit later on. So we're just gonna go in and trim all of the tops out before we do any digging. Well, for such a small area, we ended up with an awful lot of iris rhizomes, so we're going to have plenty to distribute among the gardens. And I want to mention, too, that all the tops we've cut off are stacked up under there, and we're going to move them over to an area, let them dry, and then we'll shred them up and put them in the compost pile. They'll make great organic mulch later on. And this is kind of what we've ended up with, clumps of iris rhizomes. And the way this works is wherever the parent rhizome was planted, say, four years ago, they spread from that point, and this is the parent one that you can see here in the middle of the clump. Now what we want to try to do is the oldest ones, and some of them you'll end up with will look like this, a little bit older, rotted, deteriorating. We'll just dispose of those in the compost pile too. But what you want to try to do is with a knife or some kind of object, go in and separate them. And uh, usually the ones on the outside are a little bit smaller and easier to reset. And we'll leave a few roots on them, and then we're just gonna, we work the soil up, and our, remember our soil here, we're not adding any phosphorus or potassium because they're in pretty good shape. And when you plant them, you don't wanna set them too deep. Um, and sometimes it's better even to raise them up in case the soil is so soft that they're gonna settle. And then we'll just tap it down and uh, put them in about probably oh anywhere from 8 to 12 inches apart because they will eventually fill in. Now I want to also show you we've just ordered some and remember this is a time of year that you'll be getting some in the mail if you ordered them from various catalogs. They came stacked like this and you'll see they've cleaned them off pretty nicely and they've written on the iris flag uh, the name of the cultivars or varieties for us. Now when those were shipped well, you want to make sure that they're cool and dry and if as many as we have we're obviously not going to get a lot of them planted today so we'll take them in where it's cool and dry and uh, try to protect them from the hot sun before we plant them. Now another good point is that it's really a good idea to try to plant these later in the evening that way they won't be under as much heat stress. Now after we get them planted some people will mulch. I want to caution you on that. Depending on the mulch, if you get it too thick, you can run into some problems. And we use wood chips here, and uh, we had a lot of pill bugs or sow bugs, just hundreds of them. And sometimes they will feed on the rhizomes, depending on the population. Plus, the mulch can rot the rhizomes. So you want to be cautious in mulching, and usually they'll spread and shade themselves out. Now, I want to show you something else, too. A lot of people will go in and uh, trim the flags or the foliage off this time of year kind of as a ritual and they won't transplant them. That's not a good practice because the foliage is needed to pull the plants through the winter and make new rhizomes and also put support in the blossoms for next year. So the only time that you'd ever want to cut the tops off are if you're transplanting them or dividing them like we're doing now. So probably um, we're going to be real careful with their watering, make sure they don't get stressed the next few days. We won't even fertilize ours until next spring, probably with the organic nitrogen. And then we may see a reduction in bloom period on them next year, but it won't take too long. They'll be off and growing. And in about three, four, maybe five years, we'll have to come back and do this again.